Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bitch Side Podcast channel. I'm your host, the HOD of the PSP. Like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and enable notifications to receive all the updates from this match recaps and other content on the channel. Follow us on social media site, PSP on Twitter, Bitch Side Pod on Instagram, and listen to us on Spotify, Google Podcast, or any other platform. And we're coming to you straight after the game between Atlanta and Real Madrid in the Champions League. And quite frankly, this is another game that flipped my expectations really um certainly and and without a doubt that's not downplay it this game revolves around the fact that there was a red card very early on in the uh, in the game inside the 20th minute for atalanta for remo Freuler. by the way i had a bit of thought i went back and forth with it in my mind is it a red card is it not a red card in in the end i figured out it was a red card pretty much like you know uh, mendy was pretty much going towards the goal let's be facing it you know facing the facts here the other defenders from Atalanta were quite far and you know pretty much um, you know it it has all the sort of uh, sort of conditions that a red card in that position um, apply to before that Real Madrid I think started strong really started pretty um pretty well uh dominating the game and possessing um football um atalanta didn't show a lot of venom in the beginning and certainly after the red card it was i think game on for real madrid but even so I think Atalanta had a terrific defensive performance for the most part. Uh, Real Madrid didn't really have a lot to do in the first half, at least until the last five minutes or so. They started mounting up the pressure, starting getting a couple of crosses in, a couple of situations where Vinicius was in certain space that he didn't find a lot, and um, he missed a couple of chances, certainly. Uh, Golini had a brilliant save against Varane from a set-piece in, um, in the last couple of minutes of the first half. So Atalanta, I think for them, the first target was just to keep the score nil nil as long as possible and obviously for the rest of the game and the second half it was it was pure attack versus defending because in the first half atalanta tried a little bit to go forward tried a couple of opportunity maybe half chances half opportunities really no shots on target or anything but in the second half it was pure attack versus defending real madrid were attacking and you know ven without any venom um in for, for the most part a couple of shots from outside the box that didn't work from Modric and from Cruz, but certainly that looked like a hint, and keep that in mind really, that looked like a hint of something they could do in front of an Atalanta side who were regressing and playing deeper and deeper and deeper, the substitutions for Gasparini I think were all towards sort of strengthening the, the back, Palomino was in, I mean Ilicic was in, f I, I, I suspect for no reason because he was subbed off again, and I don't know if that is a tactical choice or an injury uh, for substitution, but I think it's not a good decision anyway to get Josip Ilicic subbed off. If if he's okay, like if he's fine, why do you get him off after you got him on in the first place as a sub? Uh, Pesino is out late. Uh, Malinovsky was introduced in. So pretty much Atalanta with, were with no strikers in the last 20 minutes or 25 minutes of the game against a side like Real Madrid, who just, you know, very comfortable in the back. Coutoir had nothing to do. Um, Varane had nothing to do. Nacho had nothing to do. Casemiro, although he's missing the next match, which you know, is going to be something bad for Real Madrid. Uh, I reckon um, didn't have a lot to do, aside from that yellow card against Zapata. The problem was the finishing for Real Madrid. The, the finishing wasn't okay, the final touch, the final pass, the penetration wasn't as strong as we'd expect in terms of being offensive and trying to, um, you know, try to get from the middle uh, of the park. They tried a little bit wide, they tried to cross it, the shots, until, of course, the 84th minute it. and the saviour was I think an outside choice if you think about it it was Fairlon Mendy a player who for the second half pretty much was hiding really he wasn't showing off too much in that second half he was making forward runs too much he came he comes up with the um, solution with the save for Real Madrid saving the win for them 1-0 it ended it was pretty much a comprehensible score a really understandable score overall this was the score that this game deserved i would say real madrid dominated the game atalanta had a terrific defensive performance 70 80 percent i think real going through now with this result and you know they should be able to manage the game in madrid so you know unless a miracle happens and unless it's going to be a complete collapse from real madrid which is possible i think real madrid 70 to 80 percent are through to the second uh, to the next round of course the quarterfinals for Atalanta, 
they would need a little bit more of Lady Luck to stand by their side. They need more of Lydea, ironically, to stand more by their side and help them to, you know, spare themselves some trouble in the second leg for the first half and maybe go for, um, you know, equalise on an aggregate or something like that. But I don't see Atlanta going through now. Their chances are really slim at the moment. And with missing someone or Kremo Froiler in the midfield, it is not going to be, you know, the easiest of jobs for Atalanta. Anyway, congratulations for Real Madrid, a deserved win overall, looking at the circumstances of the game. Before the game, everybody had their two cents to throw. Everybody talked about how Atalanta could annoy Real Madrid, could cause troubles for them. They certainly didn't, and Real Madrid deserved their victory hard, be it uh, that victory, but it was deserved anyway. Uh, that's it for this match. I was your boy, the HOD of the PSP. Like, share, comment on this video, subscribe to the channel, enable notifications to receive all the updates. Um, of course, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Follow us on social media. I'm at SidePSP on Twitter, which is on Instagram, and you can listen to this podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform. We're going to delve, of course, back to this game to the other game between München Gladbach and City, Manchester City defeating the German side 2-0 and uh, of course reviewing some Europa League encounters and we're going to be talking about a certain situation involving the Spanish clubs in the Champions League and thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I was your boy the HD of the PSP and until next time I'll see you soon, goodbye.